Hello, welcome to lecture 2 of module 3. This is lecture number 8 of the course. In this lecture, we are going to discuss about some important property of quantum entanglement. In the process, we will also discuss quantum gates, which is a very important topic in quantum information science. At the outset, I will discuss the very key concept of quantum uh, classical communication and local operation and this is an important topic and it will be uh, you will find it very useful when we will discuss uh, applications of quantum entanglement in module 4. Let us first discuss LOCC or local operations and classical communication. In any quantum communication experiment it is desired that we should be able to distribute quantum particles or qubits across distantly separated laboratories. It is clear and obvious that once we prepare a set of entangled states, we would like to distribute and send them to various laboratories situated at many distant places. If we can transport a qubit uh, without any decoherence, then any entanglement shared by that qubit will also be distributed perfectly. As you know, perfect quantum communication is essentially equivalent to perfect entanglement distribution. Unfortunately, the issue of decoherence comes as an obstacle. I am sure you know what decoherence is. Decoherence is a phenomenon responsible for destruction of a quantum superposition state including an entangled state. Decoherence generally occurs when the quantum state interacts with noise or environment. In essence, decoherence or the effect of noise invariably forbids us to send quantum states over long distances. Now one way to overcome this problem is to distribute quantum states by using the available noisy quantum channels uh, that is available to us and then overcome the effect of this noise using high quality local quantum processes in the distinctly separated labs. This is termed as local operations. In this way, we can avoid decoherence induced by co communication over long distances. The result of these local operations, local quantum operations could be communicated to different labs using the so-called classical communication and this we can do by using the standard available telecom technologies. Now in this figure, here you can see a standard quantum communication settings between two labs run by Ellis and Bob. Okay. Ellis and Bob may perform any generalized measurements that is localized to their respective laboratories and the result of the measurement is communicated classically. The brick wall indicates here the fact that no quantum particle or qubits are getting exchanged coherently between Ellis and Bob. This set of operation is generally referred to as LOCC that is local operations, local quantum operations and classical communications. A good amount of material of this lecture is based on this article including the image that I have just shown. To give you a simple perspective on LOCC, let me provide you this example. Let us say Ellis and Bob are located at two distant laboratories and they are sharing two Bell states say phi minus and psi minus okay and you know that phi minus is this Bell state is given as 1 by root 2 0 k 0 belongs to Ellis and the second k belongs to Bob uh, 0 b second qubit and we have 1 and 1 here and another bell state is psi minus which is given as 1 by root 2 first qubit belongs to Ellis and the second qubit belongs to Bob it is a typical 
uh, EPR kind of a pair, this particular state, psi minus, so 0B. So this is what we uh, have, uh, both Ellis and Bob are sharing uh, each other. Now Ellis and Bob can choose uh, one of the two shared states and but uh, the information about which state it is exactly is lacking and Ellis and Bob have been provided with a communication channel a classical communication channel they have been provided with so this is a classical communication channel and this may be a internet an internet or a telephone okay now by using LOCC actually Ellis and Bob can distinguish uh, whether they are sharing the state phi minus or they are sharing the state psi minus. To do so, Ellis has to measure her qubits. In LOCC, as you know, LO means local quantum operations, and Ellis does her own. Uh, uh, quantum operations local quantum operation so here the quantum operation she does is Ellis measures her qubit and after uh, getting the outcome getting the result she uh, send the information Ellis send uh, her measurement information or outcome her measurement outcome to Bob measurement outcome to Bob by classical channel okay and after Bob received this uh, Bob then make her his own measurements Bob performs measurement on his qubit measurement on his qubit after receiving receiving uh, the outcome from a list measurement okay i hope you get it now uh, if that is so uh, then certainly they would know uh, what uh, you know state is shared by them this will this will enable enable Ellis and Bob because then Bob can also communicate this information that what measurement what the measurement outcome to Ellis and this will enable Ellis and Bob to distinguish distinguish the bail states I hope you get it that means for example what's going to happen is this suppose if Ellis you know measure measure zero and bob measure one this implies they share the bell state psi minus it's as simple as that now we already know what quantum entanglement is so let us now discuss some of its properties the first entanglement properties that I would like to discuss is related to entanglement creation. The entangled states can be created by applications of unitary operations on separable states. The unitary operations capable of transforming tensor product states to entangled states are called entangling operators. There are many entangling, entangling operators, for example, the so-called C naught operator is an entangling operator that we are going to discuss soon. Now let me digress a little bit. Let me first discuss and remind you about unitary transformation. A unitary transformation is mathematically speaking is carried out by unitary matrix capital U. It is unitary if capital U dagger U is equal to capital U U dagger is equal to I. I is the identity matrix. Let me in this context discuss about quantum gates. As you know, in quantum information, informations are stored using uh, qubits. Uh, a 
unitary transformation can be used or a set of unitary transformation can be used uh, to change the state of the qubit or transform the state of the qubit and these unitary transformations are termed as quantum gates. One very simple uh, quantum gate is the so-called uh, NOT gate. Quantum NOT gate is easy to understand because it is analogous to the so-called classical NOT gate and as I said quantum gates are represented by unitary operators and here a NOT gate is going to be represented by this unitary operator U0 and when it operates on K0 it converts it to K1 and when it operates on K1 it converts it to K0. The matrix representation is easy to get here. In the computational basis K0 and K1, I can write the matrix form of U0 gate as follows. The first uh, element in the first row would be 0 U0 0. Second element in the first row would be and in the first column would be 0 U0 1 and the second row the first element in the second row would be 1 u not 0 and here the second element in the second row would be 1 u not 1 right so obviously now because of the these operations you can immediately write here it would be 0 1 and this is going to be 0 0 this one is going to be 1 1 and this one is going to be 1 0 and obviously from here i get the matrix representation of u naught as 0 1 1 0 and this is the procedure we can adopt for writing uh, the form of the matrix for any quantum gates. This quantum gate is symbolically represented by this symbol. Users put a X here. This is the representation of a NOT gate. Now there is an another gate that is very interesting and that already as I mentioned that is the so-called C0 gate and using this quantum gate one can uh, you know obtain entangled quantum states and this is called C0 means it is called controlled not gate control not gate and it is a two qubit gate it is a two qubit gate that means that two qubits are put as input you have two channel here and in the first channel you will put first qubit and in the second channel you are going to put the second qubit the first qubit is called control and the second qubit is called target target bit and this is control bit and a c naught gate is represented by this symbol okay and the rule by which C0 gate operates is as follows if the control bit or the control qubit if the control qubit is 1 then the target qubit the target qubit gets flipped that's the rule otherwise there is no sense otherwise there is no changed sense in the target you can understand it very easily if i give you the operation rule by this unitary transformation so it's going to be represented by a unitary operator say uc not well you have your input as 0 0 and this is the first qubit and this is control 
and this is target because now the control qubit is zero so target qubit does not flip and at the output you will simply get zero zero and if the qubits input qubit search says zero one here also output is going to be simply zero one because the control qubit is zero the target remains as it is and if now the control qubit is one and target is zero then control target qubit now gets flipped and zero would become one on the other hand if your control qubit is one and the target is one the target qubit gets flipped at the output and the output you are going to get is one zero so this is the operation of a c naught gate and the matrix representation of the c naught gate can be easily worked out and if you worked out the our, the matrix representation will look like this you will have one zero 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 one zero 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 one zero zero one zero while i write this uh, matrix form the basis states that i'm using here i'm going to use a two qubit basis the basis state would be zero 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 one one zero one one because it's a two qubit system right now let me quickly discuss about another useful and relevant gate that is called the hadamard gate hadamard gate and the hadamard gate is represented by this symbol it's a sim single qubit gate so it's represented by this symbol okay and its operations can be defined this way when the hadamard gate operates on k0 it converts it to a superposition state k0 plus k1 by root 2 and if it operates on the uh, qubit or state k1 it converts it to superposition state k0 minus k1 by root 2 and now here also you can write down a matrix form for this hadamard gate and it would be 1 by root 2 1 1 1 minus 1 because it's a sim single qubit gate the basis states are here k0 and k1 okay you can read more about quantum gates in the classic book by nielsen and swan now let me give you an example how these gates can be quantum gates can be used to obtain bell states so now i will briefly discuss bell state generation generation using quantum gates quantum gates to do that let me consider this quantum circuit here i have a two qubit gate but two gates i'm going to use first i have a hadamard gate and input of this hadamard gate is going to be the output of this hadamard gate is going to be the input of a c naught gate and i have this uh, a c naught gate is there followed by this hadamard gate so i hope you are getting it uh, so this is the hadamard gate we have in this structure we have a this is a quantum circuit we have a a Hadamard gate followed by followed by a C naught gate. As an example, let me consider the input as zero zero. That means the first qubit uh, is put uh, zero is put as the input here to this Hadamard gate, and here I am putting the another qubit zero okay then as it passes to the hadamard gate let me just write it properly so this is what my input this is my input to this uh, structure circuit 
this is my inputs now when the first qubit passes to the hadamard gate it basically gets converted to 0 plus 1 by root 2 right so let me write here again when i have put 0 as my input at the output of the hadamard gate i am getting 0 plus 1 by root 2 and that is the input for my c0 gate that is my control gate and at the output what i am going to get you see if i have con and here the input is zero right uh, in the second qubit of the control gate that's the target target is zero so at the output obviously what you are going to get if your input is zero the target does not get flipped so you are going to get zero zero but if the control is one target is going to get flipped now here these are this is my control so at the output i am going to get if my input is one uh, that is control is one the target is going to get flipped and it will become one right so i will get zero zero plus one one by root two and you know this is one of the it's a bell state one of the bell state okay i think this is phi plus you can verify it you can check it this is phi plus maybe we'll do a couple of problems in the problem solving session now let us go back discussing properties of quantum entanglement one of the most important and useful property of quantum entanglement is that entanglement can be swept it basically means that entanglement between parties a and b can be transferred to parties b and c even though a and c never directly interacted to understand this property let us uh, consider this example say a b and c are three parties represented by ellis bob and charlie okay let ellis and bob let us say ellis and bob share entangled state entangled states phi plus and it is it's a bell state so this bell state is 0 0 plus 1 1 by root 2 this is shared by ellis and bob again again let us assume that Ellis and Charlie, Ellis and Charlie share entangled state, entangled state, again say phi plus. Now this is shared by Ellis and Charlie, that is 0, 0 plus 1, 1 by root 2. The first qubit is belongs to A here in this case and second qubit belongs to Bob and here the first qubit belongs to Ellis, the second qubit belongs to Bob, here the first qubit belongs to Ellis and this belongs to Charlie, this belongs to Ellis and this belongs to Charlie and what we are ultimately going to show you by this protocol that this entanglement state can be shared between bob and charlie so that's what the we are going to do using this protocol now you can uh, write a resulting state uh, with respect to ellis qubits at first two places the state the resulting state because of this shear resulting state written with Ellis qubits 
at first two places at first two places is so let me write this state a a b c first two places is belonging to a list now so we are going to have this so i think you can make it out uh, if if i write these two things together you can easily understand the what are the combinations i can get first two states belongs to a a list zero zero and the second one so just look at it look at uh, this one and this one zero zero a a and then this zero zero b c so if you see this together you will see what i mean by this and then you are going to have similarly you can write uh, the first two places belonging to uh, elise 0 1 a a now here you look at this one and this one 0 1 belongs to elise and 0 1 belongs to bob and charlie right as you can see just look at it again these two i i mean to say this is what you are going to have and then you have another two possibilities plus half you are going to have now you look at uh, this one and this one okay so one zero one zero this belongs to alice and then you have again you see here this is your bob and this is your charlie right so one uh, that would be one zero one zero right one zero one zero this is belonging to bob and charlie and that final one now you again look at this one and this one the first two places one one belong to alice and then one one belonging to bob and charlie i hope it's easy to see so this is what you are going to have now alice now what alice is going to do this is a protocol that we are discussing alice wishes alice wishes to perform a measurement on her two qubits perform a measurement measurement on her two qubits when it, it, the state is this right so she designs measurements operators for this purpose based on the bell state and this measurement operators she designs are as follows so she uses bell state phi plus phi plus this is one measurement operator and there is no measurement done by bob and charlie so they are represented by this identity this is one measurement operator c is basically going to exploit all the four bell state so another bell state c will use is phi minus phi minus uh, here you will have and bob and charlie are going to uh, not going to do any experiment and then you have psi plus psi plus i have already discussed about bell states in great detail please look at what i mean by these bell states psi plus psi plus and so basically c is designing three measurement elements a uh, four measurement element because there are four bell states psi minus psi minus a a one b one c 
so these are the measurement operators she is having so just let me give you the all the bell states uh, for your reference phi plus is 1 by root 2 0 0 plus 1 1 phi minus is 1 by root 2 0 0 minus 1 1 and psi plus is 1 by root 2 Z, uh, it is psi plus is 0 1 plus 1 0 and psi minus is 1 by root 2 0 1 minus 1 0 okay these are the so called bell states now there are four possible outcomes now say if the outcome of Ellis measurement if the outcome of Ellis measurement because Ellis is the only one who is making uh, doing this measurement if outcome of Ellis measurement is 0 0 then the Ellis uses the first measurement operator Ellis uses the first measurement operator that's what it means measurement operator which is let me write the first measurement operator was phi plus phi plus and bob and charlie does not do any experiment so this is what you have if that is so the state psi a a b c it collapses to it because of the measurement this state collapses to the state m0 psi a a b c divided by square root of p of 0 p of 0 is the outcome of first uh, uh, measurement right 0 0 to probability of getting the outcome 0 we have already discussed these things in the earlier class now m0 by m0 actually i mean this is my m0 this is my m1 this is my m2 these are the measurement elements this is m3 right so you can work it out and if you work it out and we'll work it out uh, maybe in the problem solving session in this thing in great detail it's very simple to work out if you work out you will find that the state uh, psi a a b c collapses to it would be half 0 0 0 0 a a b c plus 0 0 1 1 a a b c plus 1 1 0 0 a a b c plus 1 1 1 1 a a b c and this can be actually expressed as 1 by root 2 0 0 a a plus 1 1 a a direct product with 1 by root 2 0 0 b c plus 1 1 b c now what you see you see that this particular state is nothing but the bell state phi plus and this state is which belongs to now bc uh, bob and charlie shared by bob and charlie is phi plus so it can be clearly seen that bob and charlie indeed possess the entangled pair phi plus so this is what is entanglement sweeping is now elise has outcome zero zero as a witness to this situation now say next say Ellis say Ellis measures or Ellis get 
zero one as the outcome zero one as the outcome and in that case alice uses in this case alice uses measurement m1 which is phi minus phi minus a a 1 b that is bill uh, bob and charlie does not do anything does not do make any measurement and it can be shown that in this case psi a a b c this particular state collapses uh, to this pair of states that is 1 by root 2 0 0 a a minus 1 1 a a and it will be 1 by root 2 0 0 b c minus 1 1 b c so what it means now it means this implies that bob and charlie bob and charlie do possess do possess entangled pair entangled pair this is nothing but phi minus right this state is phi minus entangled pair this is the entangled bell state phi minus and alice has the outcome zero one as the witness alice uh, has the outcome outcome zero one as the as a witness as a witness for this for the pair the fact that bob and charlie is now possessing entangled pair Bo alice can know that by making a measurement if the outcome is zero one then she will know that uh, bob and charlie possess the entangled pair phi minus similarly you can easily guess that if alice measurement outcome outcome is one zero then bob and charlie share the entangled state psi plus and finally if alice measurement measurement outcome is one uh, one one if alice measurement outcome is outcome is one one then then bob and charlie charlie share the entangled state psi minus so by the way as you can see bob and charlie has no knowledge about who is of the entangled pair they possess now for each entangled pair as you as we have seen alice possess a unique measurement outcome and she can tell uh, who is bob and charlie uh, through classical communication that what entangled pair they are possessing bob and charlie who has never ever met uh, before can now possess entangled pair with the help of a person in the middle and that is Elise. Okay. Now let me discuss another property of entanglement. This property of quantum entanglement is related to no instant communication. Entanglement does not allow instant communication between two parties. This is an important property. It clearly shows that the so-called spooky action at a distance does not mean that it is possible to have instant communication. Let us prove it. The proof is a little bit technical. Still, I hope that you will be able to follow it. Say, let rho be a mixed state be a mixed state over Hilbert space over Hilbert space H is equal to H A 
the tensor product between these two Hilbert space A and B. A you can consider to be the space belonging to Ellis uh, HA, that's the Hilbert space, and HP is the Hilbert space belonging to the gentleman Bob. And every such mixed state can be written as a sum of superposition, uh, basically sum of tensor product of linear operators A i and B i. A i belong to H a and B i is a linear operator belonging to H p. So here A i belongs to the Hilbert space H a and B i is a linear operator belonging to H b. Please note that here I am not saying that these are product state, rather you should understand that I am writing it in terms of linear operators. I am not writing rho is equal to say rho a rho b. This is not I am saying. Okay. And also consider some measurement uh, operators. Consider m is equal to a set of measurement operators. m is equal to mj k number of measurement operators are there say j is equal to 1 to k and, and this belongs to the Hilbert space A belonging to Ellis say. Then Ellis can perform a measurement. Ellis can perform can perform measurements measurements and she gets the mixed state after making a measurement she gets the mixed state say rho des is equal to i is equal to 1 to n and there are set of measurements case uh, number of measurements are there j is equal to 1 to k so a list touches only hard qubits m j and bob's qubit that is b in the linear operator b is not getting touched so this is what we mean by this right and you have this m j dagger and identity this means that only measurement is done over that of ellis uh, uh, place only right in ellis laboratory here here you can see that mj rho mj dagger denote the application of measurement this denote the application application of measurement operator measurement operator to the mixed state to the mixed state row okay this actually you have also discussed earlier uh, in the uh, measurement uh, topic that we discussed in the last lecture now let us trace out let us now trace out trace out h a from the state from the state rho des and this is going to give me these yields i am just doing the trace operation tracing out operation it's just like working out the reduced density matrix. We have done so many problems related to that. So when we are tracing out A, that means trace operation is going to be done over on a list place only. So here I let me write the state row this here. And it is MJ AI MJ Dagger. Uh, tensor product with bi 
so operation is done over ellis uh, place only so trace operation will be done accordingly and because it's a linear operation so i can take it inside so i j trace m j a i m j dagger b i and this i can further write as i sum over i trace a i sum over j m j m j dagger b i and we know the measurement operator property this is nothing but the identity and therefore what i will get is sum over i trace a i b i and this is nothing but you can easily see that this is trace over a over the original mixed state row okay so what we have got from here you have to think carefully here this means that the measurement did not change the traced out state this implies it's little bit technical but if you think properly then you will get it this means that measurement did not change the traced out state this did not change the traced out state okay what does that mean that means that when you are uh, tracing out a that means you are going to get the state of bob basically so bob because the tracing out operation did not change anything so bob cannot gather any information about the system without the classical communication so this basically implies that bob cannot bob cannot gather any information any information about the local operation that is done by ellis any information about the system without without the classical communication without the classical communication and you know that classical communication cannot happen faster than light speed and therefore that means instant communication is not possible all right that's how we can prove it this is little bit technical i hope you get it even if you did not get it please don't worry just remember that entanglement does not allow instant communication between two parties there are couple of more properties of quantum entanglement let me simply mention them separable states contain no entanglement i think this is easy to understand all non separable states are entangled the entanglement of states does not increase under locc that is local quantum operations and classical communication transformations and finally entanglement does not change under local unitary operations let me stop here for today in this lecture we have learned a lot about uh, some important properties of quantum entanglement in the next lecture we'll start discussing quantification of quantum entanglement in the context of discrete variable quantum mechanics so see you in the next lecture thank you so much